So the one other convenience factor we'll look at, uh, the other thing that it's annoying to have to do, not only is just type in your password every time, but having to type in these Um, it's also somewhat annoying to have to type in your username, at server, so on and so forth every time. So on all of your machines, or you may not have one yet, if it doesn't exist, you can create one. But in that same .ssh folder, you can have what's called a config file. So the file is just called config. By default, you won't have one. So if you don't have one there, we'll create it now. So if you do something like emacs.ssh slash config, this is essentially a way to set up shortcuts for any of your SSH machines. In the same way I have my Emacs file synced with Dropbox, I have this file synced with Dropbox, so this is like my SSH config file I use everywhere. I hope there's nothing sensitive in here, I don't think so. Um, but essentially what this does is it gives me shortcuts. So if I just type in Condor, it's going to know that I mean user a sailor at condor.andysailor.com. If I just type in, so I have the other machines in here, if, we scroll, if I scroll down, right? So if I just type in Elra, it's going to automatically fill in the rest of this information for me. Uh, there's a bunch of directives you can put here. So you see port 22 is the standard. So we're, this is actually the same as having no port line. But sometimes you'll be connecting to systems that need something other than port 22. You can either specify that by using the dash P, you can do SSH dash P port number, or you can hard code it here. So when you get to the point where you have a bunch of systems you need to connect to, this becomes really handy because it essentially gives you a single place to save all your information. So this combined with, so I had an entry for Condor in there that expands to asailor at condor.asailor.com. If I combine this with the fact that I just copied my key there, I should be able to do something like type in SSH Condor and it'll connect me to Condor. Or where this is really handy is now when I'm typing in like the SCP commands, right? I can just type Condor and then path. So it gives me a much, there's a lot less I have to type, it's less prone to errors, it's hard coded in. Um, you guys could, like I said, set this up with the other machines. So I'll bring this back up in case you want to look at it. But if you guys essentially copied these lines to a file called config in your .ssh, you would be able to access our run just by typing ssh lr dash zero one. Or you know, you can just call it e1 if you want to be really quick, right? Change the host to e1 and then just type in ssh e1. These lines need to be obviously, this will be your username, your host name should, that's always the full host name, so your host name should be the same as me. You can leave out the port, you don't necessarily need it, unless you just want it to remind you that you could change it. Um, and then whatever you type in host, this is your shortcut. So you can put whatever you want here, that's what you'll type in instead. If I close this. So the other nice thing about this file is the SSH command in most systems knows how to autocomplete from this file. So if you are a, you know, hardcore tapper like I am, you can now start typing C. If I do SSH C tab, it's going to spin condo, right? I can make SSH commands in split seconds like it's nobody's business. Um, you good? Yeah. Cool. So just to demonstrate that, like if I do SSH C and I hit tab a couple of times, it's going to go ahead and start to expand it. It's going to read that file, right? If I do SSH E and hit tab, it's going to show me. So it knows that Elra is in that file, right? It essentially gives me, if I have an obscure server I use once every year and I don't want to remember its full path and my username on it, I can, it's all hard-coded in that file. Is that good?